This lesson has been taken from the Mechanic Mindset training platform. If you want to take your diagnostics to the next level, download our new mobile phone app and sign up at mechanicmindset.com today. Use the code YouTube to get your first month of Diagnostic Coach absolutely free. A good diagnosis process will help you save time and keep your customers happy, both of which will help you make more money as a technician or business owner, not to mention the bragging rights and sense of accomplishment for finding it first time. So here are a couple of scenarios. Let's see if you can relate to any of them. So the first one's the light bulb moment. Now, this one's not as damaging as the second scenario, but it can save you a lot of time and money. So picture this, you're on the most difficult diagnosis job you've ever done. The car's in pieces, you've got wiring diagrams printed out everywhere, the multimeter's out, the oscilloscope's out, and you've tried all your different scan tools. You've even done a little bit of swap agnostics. You're five hours in and you find the fault. Then the light bulb moment strikes you. Ah, that explains why I was getting 12 volts on that other pin. Now it makes sense. That's why all these other things weren't working. If only you had spotted this in the beginning, a five hour diagnostic job could have been sorted in 30 minutes. If you'd have just stepped back and took the time to have a look at the whole picture. So light bulb moments usually happen because we've missed something early on or we've skipped the basics and ended up overcomplicating some simple diagnostic tests. You just couldn't wait to get your scope out. Now, some of this can't be helped if you have knowledge gaps. Cars are getting more and more complicated every day. But don't worry about that because Mechanic Mindset's here to help you with that too. Now, there's nothing wrong with a light bulb moment. It shows that you understand the system or you've put two and two together to come to a conclusion about the fault you were working on. You would have saved some time and you could have been doing something different like a nice creamy PDI or having a beer. However, we want the light bulb moments to be early on. And in this course, we're going to look at how we bring those sparks of light to the front end of our diagnostic process. Now, the second one is a comeback. We used to call them boomerangs and they usually hit you like this one. I can totally relate with this guy. Hopefully your comebacks don't hit you twice. It happens to the best of us, even me. Now there is nothing worse than seeing that car roll back in on the back of a truck. There are four main reasons this usually happens and a good diagnosis process will help avoid them. Firstly, it's blindly fixing intermittent faults. So we didn't actually replicate the fault in the first place and you know, guessing what the fault could be is sometimes worse than swapping agnostics, where we're just swapping components to try and fix a fault. The second one is we didn't determine a cause. The third reason is that we performed a poor repair and actually induced a new fault. And the fourth is that we didn't test it properly after we fixed it. Now, the most damaging part of a comeback isn't your pride. It's the upset customer because they're going to lose trust in you, it's going to cost them money and time, and you're going to end up getting some bad reviews. Unfortunately, people like to share a bad story more than they like sharing good ones. And here's what you lose. You're going to lose the money and time on this second repair. You're also going to miss out on any future business from that customer, and you're probably going to get some negative feedback too. The first thing they're going to say when someone asks them if they know a good mechanic, they're going to say, don't send it to him whatever you do. On a positive note, this car's come back, you've got something wrong, you're definitely going to have learned something. So here is our diagnostic process. I call it fixed it. Yes, there's an E missing, but stick with me. I've made this mnemonic to help you remember the steps of the process so that you can apply it every time. So each letter of this misspelt word represents a step in the diagnostic process. I'm going to give you a quick summary of the process and in the following lessons we'll have a look at how you can apply these steps to your own diagnostic jobs. So what is it and what will it do? This diagnostic process is a methodical time-saving diagnosis approach to the first time fix of any fault that prevents repeat repair. So the first step is uh, to find evidence. This is the first thing we do before we touch the car or anything. And there's two places to go for that. It's the vehicle and the customer. It's also important that we confirm the fault and make sure that no stone is left unturned. Step two is uh, inspect the evidence. So we've got all this evidence. We've got to then put our detective's hat on and locate the change point, find out any common denominators, weed out the red herrings and identify a starting point for our diagnosis. The next step is to execute the diagnostic plan. 
Now plan is the key word here. I see this time and time again. Mechanics testing aimlessly with no strategy, no knowledge of the results that they should be getting and repeating the tests that they've already made. So this step is all about creating a plan where we're going to test the vehicle at known points with results that we're expecting to see. We can then make a decision on whether they're good or bad and make a correct diagnosis. The next step is to determine the cause. Now, many things happen for a reason, and if you don't identify what that reason is, the likelihood is that they're going to happen again. So if you don't get rid of the cause, we have another boomerang on our hand. Expect this car to turn up on the back of a truck soon. So once we've identified the fault and de determined the cause, we need to implement the repair. Um, it's important that we don't repair the vehicle until we've identified the cause. It also goes without saying that you need to do it right or not at all. This is the point where many technicians actually introduce new faults into the system. We've probably all seen it, that pinched wire or cable that's been left loose. Finally, we need to test the system and it's important that we test it so we make sure that the customer doesn't drive out and the fault is already there. So there it is, that's a quick overview of the fixed it diagnosis process. Join me in the following lessons for a deep dive into each one of those steps. If you want to take the guesswork out of diagnostics, then come and check out the Mechanic Mindset Diagnostic Coach Programme. We have a whole online training platform which is dedicated to making things easy to understand and can also be accessed on our brand new mobile phone app. Benefit from the instant access of over 15 training courses and counting on topics like electrical diagnostics, sensors, engine management and emission systems, CAN bus and networks, and oscilloscope. We add new lessons every month. Plus, you can download certificates for completing certain courses, we have a monthly live training session, which we record if you can't make it, and a private community, which is willing to help you with your diagnostic problems. So sign up today for your first month free using the code YouTube, and I hope to see you at the next live training session.